Hi, so in part two of my shape tool tutorial, we're going to take a look at all the different shape options that you have and what you can do to manipulate them. So I talked quite extensively about the rectangle tool in the last video, so I won't talk too much about that one because we've already explored all the different things that we can do with that. So clicking on this little triangle in the corner here will bring out my flyout menu. Let's go to the ellipse tool. And I'm going to turn the stroke off on all of these so we can just see a little better. So with the ellipse drawn out, one thing I can do is I can use the convert to donut button and that will change my shapes into a donut. And then one handy thing, which I actually forgot to mention in the rectangle tool is we have this little gear here for presets. And so I can go here and it's got some preset shapes in here that I can click through and then start from there. So these are all, we've got Pac-Man and we've got this and all of these are still manipulatable. <laughs> so when I have this shape, I can, for example, change the whole radius of this and I can change where the start angle is and I can change where the end angle is. So if I wanted to maybe make it like a semicircle, I might do an exact 180 over here and then over here. Let's turn this this way. And so I think this is going to be an exact zero. And now we've got a complete semicircle. Okay, so we can change the whole radius. We can change the start and the end of it. We can also change the total angle of it over here and we can invert the angle so that basically flipped it around and then I can close it. We have all the same options that we talked about in the rectangle tool as well. So let's go back to just our normal shape. Let's get rid of this and we'll go back to this ellipse and the other thing you can do is convert to pi and again you've got red dots that you, enable you to manipulate the shape you can also grab this red dot to change things as well. So there is the ellipse tool. Next we have the rounded rectangle tool. This really isn't that different from any of the options we looked at in the previous video on the rectangle tool. The only difference is it just draws out a rounded rectangle from the get-go rather than having to do the extra step of drawing a rectangle and then converting the corners to rounded. So you could actually change this rounded rectangle to a normal rectangle and then all the options we've talked about previously are also available to you. Next down the list we have the triangle tool. So I'm going to draw out a triangle and we can change where the top point is up here. So you can see how this will change my top point. I can also just grab this red dot here and move that over so we can make this like a right angled triangle. We can also find some presets here. So we can do like a perfect equilateral or a right triangle to the right or the left. And any of these, if you create your own shape that you have selected, you can create your own presets for any of these shapes as well. And then the mirror button here just flips it exactly over. So it does kind of the same thing as if you would flip it horizontal. You can also just mirror it here. All right, the next one, let's get rid of this. The next one is the diamond tool. And again, we can manipulate the midpoint so we can create kind of like a kite-like shape with this. If we were to grab this red dot and just move like this, we can also mirror this and flip it. And then all of our other options are the same. We've also got some different presets here as well. Next, we have the trapezoid tool and we can grab the red dots and we can move either side of this over. So we could have something like this if we wanted to. And we can also make those same controls up here with the left and right points. We also have presets up here in the setting. 
and with it selected we can mirror it. All right, next shape that we have is the polygon tool. And the reason I'm going through all of these is because you can create so many different shapes from these just by messing with the different options. So you can see this made something that could be the interior of a flower, like the, the middle part of a flower. You can also manipulate those curves here. You can turn it all the way into a circle or really invert them. You can also change how many sides your polygon has. And we also find different presets for things like a rounded triangle, a pentagon, a hexagon, a heptagon, an octagon, whatever we're gonna call this, and then kind of more of a rounded, almost like a prism-like shape with rounded sides. Okay, next one is the star tool. This makes a star. And again, grab the red dots. We've turned it into a pentagon. We can take it all the way in to be something else that you could use in the interior of a flower. We can determine how many points we have on our star. We can do some curved edges, which allows us to do some interesting things. And then we can adjust the inner radius here. So this makes kind of a cool shape as well. And this is an example of, you know, how you would never have thought from the star tool you could get to this. But just playing around with some of these different options and you can get some really cool things. So we did inner radius. We can do left curve. So now we've got a flower and we can bring that back in right curve we can also adjust the thickness of that somewhat and so lots of cool things that you can do with the star tool moving on to the next one the double star tool basically has these bigger outer points and smaller inner points in between and again we can manipulate each of these we can draw them so they're all even or we could take this in even further Again, got lots of different presets here. So let's take a look at some of these presets. And then again, remember from any of these presets, we can make more manipulations to create other things. So this one you could use, there's like geometric pattern kinds of things that I've seen before. This also looks like something you might see in a tile. So all of these are variations on the double star tool. And then let's go back to just the basic one. And we can also use these controls here to make those same sorts of adjustments. And we can adjust how many points. Now I want you to notice that it says five points here right now. So that's the main points, not the supplemental points in between. All right, after the double star tool, we have the square star tool. And so we can kind of look at the presets to get an idea of what we can make out of this. So we can make X's. Kind of a Y shape, so let's go with this one. And we can also change the number of sides that we have, and we can change the thickness and the thinness of the line. You can also drag this red dot in and out in order to change that. Next up, we have the arrow tool. So this is how you would draw an arrow. And again, we can thicken or thin this middle part. We can make this turn into anything from a diamond to making more of this shape of an arrow. And then the thickness here will also manipulate that center bit. And then on the ends, you can see we've got lots of different shapes that we can change our ends to. And you can do that to each side separately. So you can pick what you want the front of it to look like. So maybe we want this shape. And let's say we want just a tail on this side and then I can still make manipulations with it. So when I drag this in and out you can see on the left it is squishing up whereas my right side is not so when I click this back on it's actually just moving it closer and you can do the same thing with the right side. So now it's squishing up 
and when I have it clicked, it keeps the ends proportional and it just squishes it in the middle. And then for both the left and the right side, we have our length of the actual arrow itself. Our next tool is the donut tool. And we've already kind of talked about this with the circle, so we get the same sorts of options here. We've got the red dots that allow us to change the opening. And we can grab the other red dot to change the start and the stop angle of this. We already looked at this with the ellipse tool, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And the same thing goes for the pie tool. We already looked at that segment tool gives us a semicircle. We can use the red dot to manipulate and when I get when I have snapping on and I wait for the green line to pop up, then I know I've got a complete semicircle within this bounding box. But I can also make it even shorter than that. And I can make it longer than that if I want. So if I want to draw a mushroom, I might use this as a mushroom cap. Again, we've got some different presets that are available to us. So this kind of gives us straight sides, but rounded on the end. And our angle can also be manipulated from this control here. So it looks kind of skewed in a way when you do this. And we can change where that lower line is here as well as with the red dot. And we can also kind of shave off the top with the upper line control. We can mirror what we've got. Now here negate is actually doing something. So it's basically taking what we've got and subtracting that from what was left before. So kind of watch closely. So here's part of the shape. Here's the rest of the shape that's a little bit cut off. So we're getting different parts of it. Okay, next tool up, crescent tool. So this makes kind of a moon-like shape and you can drag it all the way out into a circle. And as you can see, we've got lots of different presets. This would be nice in pattern making, I think. You can also get to a semicircle from the presets here. And then again, we can manipulate the outer curve. We can manipulate the other side curve. We can mirror it and we can do the negative shape of it. Delete that. Almost to the end here, getting there. Cog tool. So these next couple are handy also with flower making. So we'll grab the red dot here. We can close or open the center hole in this cog. We can grab this red dot and drag it in. We can also kind of round or kind of concave the sides here. We've got a ton of different cool presets here. You just want to play with this all day. This is a really cool one. I like this. I like that too. That kind of reminds me of like back in the day when you had a seven inch and you needed to fill in the hole in order to play it. You have to have it selected for the presets to work. That's pretty. There's like almost a pre-made flower right there. Oh, I like that too. That looks like it's almost like a negative space of a flower. That also looks like the, the little thing you had to put into a record radiation symbol. So lots of cool stuff in this one. And again, how many teeth you have can be controlled. The inner radius can be controlled. The whole radius can be controlled. The tooth size can be wider or narrower. 
the actual notch size, like the distance between the different notches can be controlled and the curvature of it can also be controlled. So a little bit concave and a little bit convex. Okay, that is one I highly recommend if you want to make flowers with affinity. And the other one I highly recommend for flowers is the cloud tool. So you can pull these in. You can change how many bubbles or petals you have. We've got a few presets, not as many as the last. And we can look at the inner radius with this control as well. So not as many options, not as many presets, but it does make some really nice petals pretty quickly. And then we are on the call out button. So this, if you're doing comic strips or stickers where you want to put words in here, you can control with the red dot exactly where the placement of this is. And you can control how big or small your box is. With the single radius, you can then make adjustments to any of the corners, just like we saw with the rounded rectangle. And the tail height can also be manipulated from this area. The tail end position can be moved over. The base of the tail where it connects can be moved over. The width of the tail can be manipulated. So that is the callout tool. And there's a second callout tool that's based on an ellipse. So same thing, you can change this. So one thing you could do with this is you could take the tail angle, manipulate it a little bit here, and then take the tail position, move it straight down, and then you could move this up. And you could kind of mess with this and make kind of like a, a location pin out of this. So like something like this or you can make that into an ice cream cone. And then we have the tear tool, which looks like a water droplet. So we can manipulate this to kind of give it a curved look. I really like that. Not too many presets in this one, but I really like that. We can change the curve up here. So how big the curve is, we can change the tail position. We can change the bend. So which side it bends to. And then when we click on the fixed ball size, this I could almost see being like a vase of some sort. This would be really cool. To be honest, I don't know why that's called fixed ball size. He knows the answer. They can put that in the comments, but I like what it does. It makes it easy to draw a nice little shape here. So I think we explored all the options of that. So I think it allows us to manipulate the ball part of it as opposed to the tail part of it. Our last tool is the heart tool. So here we can draw out a nice heart. We can change how much it cleaves. And if we did that, we could actually duplicate and rotate that in another way to make some flower petals. And we can change the spread up here as well. And then don't really have any presets here, but I think there are lots of cool ways that you can manipulate this. And especially if you were to convert this to curves, you can kind of do those more curvy kinds of hearts that you see sometimes in illustrations. So something a little bit more kind of just doing this on the fly, but something a little bit more like that, just by converting it to curves and playing with the nodes. Okay, so that's a tour of all the different shapes and what you can do with them. I hope that helps you to see some of the possibilities. I know I've said multiple times in the past that the affinity shapes make it so easy to create 
you almost don't need to be able to draw. You just need to be able to create shapes and to be able to see the shapes. And if you want to explore this a little more, I have a short little workshop style course, which you can find in the description called Create Cute Animals in Affinity. It does work in designer, but as you can see, I'm in publisher and you can do all of this in publisher as well. So you don't even need to be in designer, but if you want to explore some different ways to see the shapes in animals, as well as use the shape tools primarily in conjunction with the pen and the node tool in order to create very simple illustrations that you could use in children's worksheets or in stickers. So check out that link in the description. Thanks for watching.